Now, your book, Stranger to History, was a very powerful debut that you made, where you exposed the many faces of Islam and, of course, uh, the faith of your late father. What conclusion did you actually come to about Islam and Muslims in general? I was very interested in a particular kind of hold that the religion had on people, which was the way that people could be Muslim or Islamic while ostensibly having no faith. People. And not even practicing. Exactly. So I was very interested in what part of the religion remained in people that was political and historical, that was something quite apart from the faith. It wasn't in the book, it wasn't part of religious practice, but it was still a very strong force. It influenced their ideas of America, of India, of history. And this for me was a more important part of Muslim identity. It was more volatile a thing than even the faith itself or what was in the Quran, let's say, you know. So I thought that w the kind of religion that existed in, let's say, a man like my father, but he's not alone in that, which influenced his idea, for instance, of, of Indian history, but his positions on Israel or Kashmir or things were too strong to be just a political opinion. I felt that they were informed by faith. By a, gr a sense of a greater belonging. Uh, of a right, of a, sen of a religious identity working on him. Uh, and I believe that it was the foundation of Pakistan. That and a nation that you have said before, based on any religion, can have nothing but that then. It, it, it's, it's always going to fight to perpetuate that. You faith. have to say what you're about. Right. You know? and, and when you're in times of trouble, especially, people want to know what you're about. And if, what, if you haven't really thought it through, and, you en and it ends up, well, there's this book that, that makes you who you are, or this act of faith, and then people come by and say, Pakistan ka matlab kya la 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 la. You can't, you can't argue that. And you'll see that a lot of these people who are moderate in Pakistan, they don't really have a response. They can't talk about that Jinnah's idea of a secular homeland. It's a discredited idea. It has no regenerative force. It's not convincing anyone. The one thing that people are able to use is this ugly idea of more religion. You know, and so, so a voice like your late father's voice is just unheard or, or silenced it's, it's instantly. Not, yeah. People would have yeah. you believe otherwise. They'll talk about civil society and all of this thing. They'll make it seem like there's a battle, like there are two sides. There are not two sides. There is one very small, very faint voice now that's beleaguered and threatened. And then there's a very loud, very disturbing voice. So then would you say that Pakistan is a doomed state? I think that the I, I think that we have to think of a post-Pakistan reality. In our in the lifetimes of our parents, they've seen this country, ancient country, carved up into three pieces. They've seen that reconfigured 20 years later. It's not so inconceivable to think of a post-Pakistan world. I don't think India should keep saying this sort of cant about oh we need a safe and secure Pakistan. We need to think of what we with these with this deep connection, civilizational connection to the people across the border have to offer them. What are we going to do if there's a refugee crisis? If there are three million Pakistanis on our border seeking escape from an awful regime. That's so you're actually suggesting um, a, a point where India and Pakistan kind of become one again. I, Is that what you're I, saying? I, I don't think it's so inconceivable. We talked about a jo we talked about a joint mechanism in Kashmir. Why is it so hard to think of a joint mechanism in Bengal, Kashmir, and Punjab? Why? What I think is going to be worrying to the Pakistanis if there, is that is, is there a feeling that it's big India coming to swallow you. Let there be on the ground with the Punjabs of both sides, the Kashmir's of both sides, the Bengal, both with such deep connections. Let them talk about new kinds of political configurations. Yeah, this, and is, it, this is such a it's such a kind of utopian idea. It's it's oh. it's. You know, it's not going to be a utopian idea because there will be a refugee crisis and it won't be something that will involve just the Indians. Everyone will, if the Pakistani state cannot hold, and I don't believe it can, the debris will affect the whole world. I have a feeling for what they call Salim Hindustan, for the undivided idea of India, which is a very big idea. It, in, it is a plural idea in its foundation of finding an insaniyat deeper, in your faith. Coming back to, some, to your book, you actually took on this journey and wrote this book to find answers to your difficult relationship with your late father, um, Salman Tasir. In the end, did you find that writing this book brought you closer or did it actually answer any questions did, or was the relationship made even more tenuous because of it? The relationship was on one level made more tenuous, but I had to, uh, there was st facts about my life that for many people when they have two parents in a stable household, those facts are taken for granted. For me, 
those facts were like obscured or made secret. Like what? You know, just the fact of who your father is, who your mother is, where you come from, who, you know, what, how your parents met, what did they do, where did they go on honeymoon?